Given that, why does the fashion industry stay, stay so creative? What is it about the fashion industry that makes it creative? I think there's a couple of things to draw out of, and those things have implications for other industries. They all revert back to the same basic idea, which is that fashion is a cyclical industry. Things go into fashion, they come out of fashion. Now, some of us don't really follow fashion. We don't really pay attention to it. Our clothes are the same clothes. We wear our clothes out, but that's a small group of us. There's a middle group that maybe doesn't wear their clothes out, but sooner or later turns them over. <laughs> and then there are people who treat clothing as disposable and buy it. And again, this is where um, our hometown favorite Forever 21 comes into play. Um, their clothes are cheap, and so you can buy them, wear them a few times, and get rid of them. And a lot of people do that. So there's a range of ways to think about clothing, a range of ways that we relate to clothing. But the point is, fashion does come in and out of, out of uh, sorry, styles come in and out of fashion. That there is a cycle, and in that cycle is something important that we need to pay attention to. That cycle is going to happen no matter what, and it's happened for a long time. So Shakespeare famously wrote that the fashion wears out more clothing than the man, meaning the point that I just made. You don't wear out your clothes; you usually get rid of them for some other reason. So even Shakespeare knew that, and you can find older examples of quotes like that. But the ability to copy, the freedom to copy. Actually, makes that fashion cycle turn faster. Now, why is that? Because when a new design comes out, let's say something that's being shown on the runway tonight, right now in New York, turns out to be a big hit, and in six months it'll be very, very desired. People will want to wear it. You'll see it in magazines. It'll be in Vogue. It'll be on television. It'll appear in different places. As that starts to happen, others will copy it. So whether it's Fabiana or Forever 21 or H&M or Zara. Or other high-end designers, they will do their own version of it. They will tweak it. They will change it slightly. Maybe, maybe they'll do an exact copy. There'll be a range of responses, but you'll start to see versions of it in the marketplace. And when we see a lot of things that look alike in the marketplace, we essentially see a trend, right? So that's what a trend is. A trend is a series of things that look alike, and trends are what drive fashion. So the ability to copy, the freedom to copy, enables trends to develop. And that, in turn, makes that fashion cycle turn faster, because now it's everywhere. So let's fast forward nine months from now, twelve months from now. Suddenly, everybody has seen that dress or that particular shape boot or whatever it might be, and we're starting to say, "Wow, that is really everywhere." Now it's at TJ Maxx. Now it's at. And you keep going down the list, and maybe you start to get tired of it. Maybe you're saturated with it, and maybe if you're a kind of fashion-forward person, you've already gotten rid of it. And so that cycle is moving more quickly and more quickly. And now you need a new thing, and the designers are there to provide you with a new thing to wear. So the fashion cycle is an eternal feature, but the freedom to copy is what makes it turn quickly. So in a sense, it induces another round of creativity by designers, forces them to give us.